Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. Today we're taking a look at a keyboard that I've really been waiting to take a look at. Um, over the last year or so, I want to say, um, Warmer has really gone from, I don't want to say a generic brand, but some of their models, I mean, the 66 was nice, the I'm going to say it was the G66. I can't even remember. M66. Anyway, they had a polycarbonate. 66% uh, was nice. They had a 60% was nice. But in the last year or so, they really have stepped up their game. And the switches, the keyboards, the keycaps, the designs that are coming out of Warmier, it's like, wow, you guys got an infusion of creativity, and I'm all for it. And this keyboard, when I first read about it, I was like, no way. I was like, this is, I mean, this checks off so many boxes, not only for me, but I think for many other people based on the number of questions and comments that I receive along these topics. Um, this kind of has everything covered. So I've been looking forward to taking a look at this one the warmer rd75 rd actually it's rapid disassembly so it's right in the name easy to remember qmk bias support we're going to take a look at that and see if we have the source code available and um, it is a three mode connectivity uh fully aluminum gasket mounted hot swappable but the big thing about this is the magnetic ball cat system you do not need any tools to get into this this is one of the I say first handful of keyboards that we've seen use this mechanism, but the first ones that came out with this, they were definitely in the several hundred dollar range, whereas it's a completely different story with the Warmer RD75. But today we are taking a look at, I believe it's a fully built one. I haven't even opened the box. Um, it's got a magnetic daughter board. That's right. It's got pogo pins. We don't even have to worry about dealing with those pesky ribbon cables or JST cables. It's got magnetic pogo pins. I mean, seriously, why did it take so long for this to come along? But I mean, they're making this available to the masses as an in-stock product. I'm loving that. So without holding any further suspense, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have in the box. In our accessories box, we have more we have an extra uh, extra selection or it might be a different selection of uh, gasket i think these are called tadpoles or um double circles there's I've, I've seen this by different i've seen them actually called spring leaf so we'll see what the mounting system is like to see if these are extra or if these are for a different mounting we have some spare switches you see these are oh wow these are unbranded they do have an LED diffuser, dustproof stem, and actually full travel. So it's not a long pull. Though it has, honestly, it sounds like a long pull delivery, but it's not a long pull. Um, this is an interesting switch. And the material, I can't, almost feels like a polycarbonate tell you the truth the top anyway i'll see what if i can find anything on these switches but i am definitely interested we have your standard wire switch and keycap puller and we have a rubberized usb-c to usb-a cable i'm always appreciative when the manufacturer includes extra switches because i mean uh, switches aren't necessarily fragile but the pins on them are and if you break one pin it's like ah I know I, I've got a little bit of OCD. I prefer that all the switches on the keyboard are the same. I know some people like to mix them up, and sometimes I do, but it is really good when they include extra switches. They're thinking about... It's almost a little bit of future-proof, in my opinion. And here we are with the Warmier RD75. Thankfully, we have a dust cover. And as I always say, dust cover is going to ensure that that keyboard is going to last as long as possible if you use it when the keyboards are not in use. All right, so initial impressions, it has a very, very smooth finish. It's almost, I'd call it almost silky. I definitely like that design. Um, 
it's very I mean, I, I know it's not an EQ. It kind of reminds me of that, but that it has the LED diffuser. That's probably going to look really cool. Now, if we take a look at the back, we have a single solitary USB-C port right in the middle. I know you got to step over stuff. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, my cat tax for, I don't know, the month. I don't know what's the last time you guys saw Velcro, but here he is. He is begging me for some loving and some treats so i'll be right back so as i was saying before velcro the cat jumped in we have a really nice design i'm loving that diffuser the keycap set the colors are quite bright we have some very clear legends on here and the finish is silky smooth very nice and soft Looking at the back, we have the single solitary USB-C plug. And on the bottom, we have this lovely looking, what I'm going to assume is aluminum weight, I believe it is. But we also have something else hiding underneath. The 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Yes, we have a lovely 75% aluminum keyboard with a pocket for the USB 2.4 dongle. Now this is held in place with a magnet and it does have a cutout there for the receiver as well as a, and it does have a side to pick off of, so definitely put it that way and then, oh that's certainly much easier to lift, but that is a really cool design element. Now, let's take a look at what we've got as far as keycaps go. Alright, we have what feels like a PBT keycap, nicely double shot. We have some clean legends with nice kerning on them. Let's see what kind of thickness we have on these. A 1.3 millimeter, not bad. Would like to see it a little bit thicker, but 1.3 is decent for pre-built keyboard. Now here we have this lovely switch. Like a long pull, but has full travel. And we have that nice LED diffuser. We do have plate mounted stabilizers. They do appear to be the newer style palm, like the palm stabilizers, and they are well lubricated. Maybe a tad too much, but not globbed on it looks like it was purposely put both on the elbows as well as on the interior of the stems and yeah these are definitely soft so i would guess these are the palm now looking at the plate we have an fr4 plate and we have on the pcb both a pet layer right above it with an IXPE foam layer above that. And yes, it does appear like we have support for screw-in stabilizers on the PCB. So if we want to replace the stabilizers, we can do that. But we'll have to find out how much clearance we have with that FR4 plate. But it does look like it has made the, uh, the space available for most stabilizers. We'll have to see when we come back to it. Okay, putting the stabilizers back in place, making sure the lock tab is engaged. Make sure the switch has nice tolerances on the plate. Let's get just an initial sneak peek at what it sounds like. I am certainly appreciating the lines on the keyboard. The design is actually very modern yet clean, not busy, but just with enough elements 
that makes it stand out. And not for nothing, I do appreciate that it doesn't have a logo right in my face. I've got to say, so far, this is probably one of my favorite 75%. But I will be doing a video. I have one more keyboard that I have to take a look at, and I'm still waiting on it. But as soon as I get it, I will do the review. Then I will be doing a comparison. I think it's a total of, I want to say seven or eight, seven, I think. Keyboards, 75% aluminum keyboards, all in stock keyboards that have become available in the last few months. And I want to kind of do my best to do an apples to apples comparison to them, um, primarily to using the same switches, which are going to be going to stick to something everybody knows, like the Gatoron, Milky Yellows, um, and using the same keycap manufacturer like ghost judges on all the keyboards so that we can actually not only compare features but also compare the sound of the keyboards using the same set of switches and keycaps so i look forward to doing that video like i said this is my second to last of that bunch that i'm waiting for um, the next one should be here shortly and then i'll be able to do that comparison and hopefully give you guys a good starting point as to where, you know, or which keyboard you might want to lean towards because I'm going to do my best to do an apples to apples comparison. So as one of the uh, very interesting and for me, great features of this keyboard is in case we want to get in there to mod it or who knows, just to check things out, all we have to do is place our fingers on the edge of the keyboard we pull slightly up on both the bottom and the top. We can unlatch the ball catch system that is in here and lift up the top just like that. There we see the diffuser and we actually have yeah, a bit of foam. It almost feels like a poron right around there. Probably not to uh, scratch up the plate. And we have four LEDs and just a... I'm not an engineer or anything, but the ball cat system, we basically have two balls facing each other in what is a, uh, what they have is, I, I, I'm going to assume a very strong spring inside of there. Now, the balls can't come out, but they can be pressed in. And on the bottom of the case, we have these very interesting shaped studs or you know, like wedges at the top. And those wedges are what push the balls in and the balls catch above that and it locks into place. So when you're removing the top, you're basically just pushing the balls back into that latch system and then pulling it out. Or I should say back into that spring system. So here, and here we have the Warmier RD75 without the top on. We can go ahead and Take it apart, but you know how we always have to be careful about those JST cables or those ribbon cables. Not here we don't. We have this lovely system where we have magnets on either side so we can ensure that it's going to the right spot. And then we have the pogo pins. And these pogo pins is a system that's used for a lot of different um, devices, but basically it's it's good enough to create a good connection, especially the way you have it set up right here. Those pogo pins all line up because of the magnets and touch exactly where they need to and create an actual good connection um, without using really any plastic pieces such as JST or the flip ups or anything like that. So. And we also see here that we do have, I mean, I've heard these called or mentioned to as sock gaskets, but um, I don't know if they, I guess they really are socks. So we do have a hole on PCB where we can use the other gaskets, the yellow gaskets that are included in the box. But if we take, pay attention right here, we see that we actually have a little stud Whereas in the tadpole, you'd also have that little stud there. So we also have 
the gaskets attaching to the PCB as opposed to the plate. So there's a possibility that we could do a um, plateless build. That'll be obviously for another day. Now we do also have these, uh, I don't want to really call them gaskets. They're almost like uh, rubberized standoffs and they don't want to come off. They're on there pretty good, so I'm not going to fight with those too much. I think that that's probably acting a bit as a force break, as I don't see any anything really to protect the top from the bottom case. Oh, well, I guess here we do. Yep, no, no, we do have them on the corners. So there, that's probably why we're not needing the force break. Not only do we have these pretty hard probably silicone rubber corners there. We also have the ball catch system, which is going to basically prevent transfer of the sound from the top case hitting the bottom case and for them both to be ringing. And we do have some really open cell foam, just a thin sheet right here. And then we have a shit, <clears throat> and then we have a sheet of PET plastic over a pair of batteries two 4,000 milliamp hour batteries for a total of 8,000 milliamp hours I mean for an aluminum keyboard that's a pretty decent amount we also see that we have hexagonal screws so that we can get to the plate below we have a logo there and I do believe this does no it's just loose because it's loose so that it could line up. I'm going to assume there's probably magnets on the inside of this as well. And it's loose so that it has some room to breathe, per se. So that the, um, so the tolerances can be a little bit off and it's not truly going to affect it connecting. So it has a little bit of give. Probably a tenth of a millimeter in each direction, if that. I mean, basically it has wobble, but that's going to ensure a good connection with the plate. So we have really nice construction. Uh, we have the ball catch system. Um, we do have these hard rubber domes at the corner as that's where it's, it's a place where sound or vibrations may travel towards or through. So it's going to stop them and damp them right here with that. But also the ball catch system is not going to allow the case to ring. So there's no need really for a force break mod, but technically, I mean, I guess you could count this as a force break mod, though it's really just providing more of a support and as a stop, which is what the force break does. But I mean, this is going to do a lot more than a piece of tape. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put this back together. We're going to line it up, make sure that we get these inside of the holes on the bottom case pegs that are sticking out of the sock gaskets and then we want to take this line it up nice careful and then push down at the top at the bottom I like to do it at the same time and it just locks into place and that's it our case is now enclosed so that is truly a great design all right so uh, let's see what the RGB looks like now that is very nice. I knew I was going to like that. I just, I think with any color, but especially with the RGB, it's really a cool effect. Now, one thing that I noticed, and I want to double check to be sure, I had pulled out this key switch, and I noticed something peculiar. Guys, see those, those four pogo pins, two on either side? the LED. I think I know what that's for, but let me see for sure. I'll be right back. So this is a hot swap knob. Um, the first time I've seen these were on a Skyline keyboard. So I assume they either um, designed it or purchased the design. But now, first time I saw on a non Skyline board was on a Fecker Galaxy 80 seeing how we have those four and they're the same thing they're pogo pins just like we saw the pcb those pogo pins seem to line up 
perfectly. So what happens, if we go ahead and install this, it fits as it's the same size of a switch. And we put this, I don't have it in another color. And then we put the knob on. Nothing happens. Well, I was kind of hoping that it would work, but it does not seem to work. Now, I don't have the via files yet, so I don't know if that is a feature. So I'm going to reach out to them, and I want to see if it's something that maybe can be programmed um, inside of via. I think I accidentally hit pause or stop there when I was putting back in the switches. But basically, um, it's, it's unfortunate that we've got those pins, but I reached out to Warmier and asked, and they said, no, that's not for a knob but I did get the VIA files. So I went through, looked at the VIA files. It's, um, it does appear to be a QMK VIA keyboard, though I haven't, I haven't received yet where the source files for QMK are. But one thing I did notice in the VIA files when I was looking at it was that it actually had the option to switch this to a knob. So I switched it to a knob and tried again, but again, it did not work. So I'm just kind of curious about that because even when I asked Warmier, they said, no, it's not for a knob, but the VIA file even indicates that. Um, I'm assuming that once this is on the store, which will be September 10th, which I've been told that is the day it will be on the store. Um, we'll probably have a little bit more information then and the QMK source files. I will come back to this keyboard that time and do my full regular review since this is currently only available on Kickstarter. But I have been using it for the past few days and I actually quite enjoy it. There's nothing about it that I dislike. Um, I do have to handle it a little differently as because aluminum keyboards are usually heavier. So I tend to grab them in different ways, but because, you know, it's got the magnetic latch system, it's, not that it's easy. It's not like it's going to slip off. I mean, I can literally pick it up off the top, but it's how you will press sometimes. And if I do it right now, while it's plugged in. I'll probably stop the recording, but sometimes you can accidentally, you know, like if you grab the side, but also press on one of the keys, because that's the way you want to open it. So um, I've just found myself being a little bit more careful when handling it, but I actually noticed that with the first ball catch, system that I had reviewed as well. It was like that as well. It's really just a matter of handling it. Anyway, I mean, stock, this keyboard sounds excellent. Um, I do look forward to coming back to it and maybe changing out the foams. Um, I want to do a tape on because I think that it actually might make this a little bit deeper. And there's a couple of different switches that I want to try in here because I think that this keyboard, the way that it's built is going to lend, it, lend itself to a very deep tone. At least that's what I think. We'll see. Who knows? Maybe I'll make it the Clacky King. But anyway, I am, I am just loving this keyboard. Um, the rapid release, the, uh, or rapid disassembly. That's why it's RD75, as I said, but the switches, the way that this is laid out, um, it did say that it had ISO also, but I don't know if I didn't pay that much attention when I'm under here, but yeah, actually that indicator kind of gives me the impression. So it did have options also for split backspace and ISO. So, but I'm going to assume that you're going to need a different plate for that. So, and that's what the VIA files kind of hinted at. So, I think that there'll be more to this keyboard than meets the eye, especially once it's actually released and in stock in um, the Warmier store. So, so again, I just got to come back to, I'm, I love how much this is a design. I mean, they're getting quite creative with the way that they're designing um, keyboards nowadays. It would have been nice if the switch would have been under there as opposed to under the cap slot key because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I get it, it's aluminum, it's hard, but I have not once read a comment praising 
switches underneath keys because I don't think that it's a, um, it, it forces people to always have one of these and, or perhaps use their fingers or other tools that might end up scratching, breaking the switch, breaking the key cap, who knows what. But with the majority of these 75% keyboards, that's how they're doing it. So it does seem to be a design choice that's being made industry-wide. I do hope that they come up with a different system. I mean, heck, I've even seen, and I mean, if you guys, if the keyboard companies want to steal my idea, that's fine. But um, a magnetic switch where you can actually have something that you can attach to your keychain, actually have a switch on the interior or behind, say, a plastic part to where you can run the magnet and turn it on and off without having to open anything. So I know that would probably cost more money and probably would just be more engineering headaches. I think the easiest thing would be is to either, you know, have a cutout for it near where the switch cutout is or have a pocket for it that is protected that's underneath here. Um, being that, you know, they're using the pogo pins to connect. There's, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be able to add three more, you know, pogo pins here to add a, uh, a little switch. So that now that's just, again, those are just my wishes. Um, it doesn't bother me that much. I literally have one of these everywhere. So it's not an issue for me, but when I've shown it, especially to people that, you know, might be using a mechanical keyboard, might be using one that I gave them, um, but aren't really in, you know, the, they're, they're not enthusiasts. They're not in the hobby. They enjoy what they've got, and, you know, but they don't know too much. They just know they like it. I mean, heck, I even have a friend of mine. He was one of the first that I gave a mechanical keyboard to. Um, I don't think that company is even around anymore. I, I can't. It's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, I gave him the keyboard um, and he used it for quite some time. And um, he lived on the other side of the state and he would travel to come see me. I would travel to go see him. We took turns. But one time he was out and uh, we were at a cafe and he pulled out his laptop and pulled out the um, the keyboard. And he was typing. I'm like, oh, but you're still using it. And he's like, yeah, I love this keyboard. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, and I was like, hey, let me take a look at it. And I just really just wanted to see how it was holding up after time. So I pulled out a keycap puller out of the bank, pulled off a key and then pulled out the switch. And if he didn't jump and just about reach for me going, why did you just break my keyboard? And I'm like, have you never watched any of my videos? He's like, I love watching the sound test. He's like, I fall asleep to them. He's like, I, I put on the playlist. For, I'm like, okay, ASMR. But don't you watch the reviews? He's like, why? I've got a keyboard that I like. <laughs> why do I need to watch reviews? I'm like, well, that keyboard's actually really old. And there's much better keyboards nowadays. He's like, no, I love this one. He just never, he didn't, he wasn't even aware that you could hot swap switches. So when I pulled off, all right, cat tax. Come here. Come here. Oh, you're just going to yell at me? Come here. You hear him, right? Come here. Hey. You got. I gotta pay cat tax if you're gonna come and interrupt my video. You got. I gotta pay the cat tax. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this is Velcro. Say hi, Velcro. I love this little guy. He can be a little mean sometimes, but he's honestly the biggest sweetheart. So he um he's asking for a little bit of attention, and it's about that time of the day, so I'll be back in just a bit. All right, now that I'm fully covered in cat hair, um, not to make the store any longer, but basically he flipped out when I pulled out um, the switch from a stabilizer key. I just wanted to see how the stabilizers were holding up because it's one of the stabilizers. There's uh, not very good stabilizers, at least tolerances weren't as one of the 
I'd say first dozen or so that it used the plumber's mod on, uh, the plumber's mod on, where it's taking the top one tape or the plumber's tape and wrapping it around the wires. And it was still on there. It was still good. There was no ticking, but I just wanted to see if it held up or if it slipped down, but it hadn't. Point is, is that he wasn't even aware that, you know, you could replace switches on it. So, well, for those of us that are enthusiasts, obviously, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to bypass a board, especially if it's one that I really like, if it's solder only. I just know that it's going to take me some time. I'm actually working on one right now, but to solder requires setting stuff up. I got to set up my solder station, got to set up my solder mat, got to set up my ventilator. Um, it takes a lot and it takes more effort, but it's usually a better payoff in the end because, you know, you do have usually on the solder version versus a hot swap version, you're going to have options to a lot more layouts. You're going to have a split space bar. Uh, you may have, you may have split space bar, step caps, locks, split backspace, ISO, all of that. It's just investment. It's an entire day investment being that I'm a father and I have teenage kids and well, just a family. Uh, there's very rarely the time that I have enough to just set a day, an entire day aside. Not that it's going to take me the entire day to solder, but between setting up, cleaning up, and, you know, taking a break, um, it's going to take, you know, some time and you really have to cut out a whole chunk of time. But most enthusiasts, especially those of us, that, you know, some of us that might not have soldering tools or we just don't want to solder unless we have to. Like, oh, that hot swap socket broke off. I got to fix it. Or the switch broke off. Let me solder it back on. I, I like that I've been seeing a lot more. I mean, the, basically my point is, is that I like seeing a lot more keyboards that are not only hot swap, but offer the different options. Now with this one, I... I don't believe I saw the option for step caps lock. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, no, there is. Huh. All right. Here. See, and what we have is the issue that we'll find with some keyboards that don't already have their um, the PET punched out. So we have to do that ourselves to ensure that the switch can go through. Let me see. Obviously we want to support the switch from behind. Ah, there we go. All right. So now we can go like this. And we can... I love that I can just... Oh, oh obviously you gotta make sure everything's still in place. I'm being a little bit too much of in a hurry here, but I love that we can just Drop all of this down. Oh, again. Let's make sure everything is in place. Make sure the tabs go into the tabs. Oh, and why does this get kind of pushed? All right. There, it all seems to be in place. Make sure they're all in their spots. Everything is here. All right. Press down now. Let's plug in. Oh, okay. Well, actually, we do get the light there. It changes. So, <laughs> see, so that's what I'm talking about. I, I, I really do appreciate these, you know, optional layouts. Now, of course, sometimes the plates don't work. I am going to assume that because it has the alternate layouts that that'll probably be available once it's available in the Warmier store and I wouldn't be surprised if they have a firmware update in the future that updates and actually allows for a knob because why else would those pads be there and why else would the VIA files have it? But that's just me guessing. I'm not promising anything. All I know is that they have assured me that this keyboard will be in stock on their website um, on September 10th. Now, I, like I said, I will come back to this and do just 
more of just an update review, using a little bit more, sharing the QMK, getting a little bit more in depth into the via, and then seeing if there's anything that has changed regarding plate availability, as well as if a knob functionality is gonna come. Anyway, um, I, I fell down the stairs the other day and kind of injured myself, so I've been out for a bit. I know that I did say I was going to do a two different sound tests. I'm gonna leave it stock for right now because I still, like I said, I still have two more keyboards. I thought it was just one, but it's two. 75% mechanicals that have come out recently that I want to review. And then all of those are going into a tier video. I think it's gonna be a total of eight or nine 75% uh, aluminum keyboards that are all within the same price margin and very similar in features. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna present all the features and try to do as much as of an apples to apples comparison as I can. And I'm going to basically share my opinion on them just because i make a list and one will be on top of the other doesn't mean that the keyboard is better for everybody it's just my choice and i feel that it's better for me so i just don't like the idea of imposing you know my what i like onto others because everybody's going to like something different now don't get me wrong there's I, I have friends and acquaintances that we have very similar likes and how keyboards sound and everything like that but you're never going to be able to please all of the people all the time Anyway, um, I really did enjoy reviewing this Warmier RD75 Rapid. It, I can actually remember what it stands for. It's Rapid Disassembly RD75. It actually makes sense. It's nice to actually have a keyboard model with a name that actually stands for something that, you know, makes sense. But I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Warmier RD75. Again, I will be coming back to it, but I'm keeping it stocked for right now so that we can compare all the 75% stock. And I've got a long list of videos because there's so many different mods that I want to do. And um, I may do like a, I may pick like three out of the top from that 75% and do different mods to them, like make one. Let's go clicky with one. Let's go deep and thonky with another one. Let's go clacky with another one. And maybe I'll add a fourth one in there and we'll go completely silent and see how quiet we can make a keyboard um, using those different keyboards. Some, uh, most of the aluminum on these keyboards is the same thickness though. Some may have a 10th or or so more or less of aluminum. So I think that the thicker they are, um, the deeper tones we're gonna get but I could be wrong. Um, we'll find out once we get there. I do hope that all of you have a wonderful rest of your day and an awesome week. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.